the trains of the past series two part four written and read for you by emily z prologue william where are we headed next william asked his grandfather without looking at him his eyes focused on the control panels going to blue moon's lake would be a waste of time miss jack is in bed you know we can't pick up any passengers until we've ensured the safety of this train i suppose the smartest plan would be to follow jack assuming he knows what he is doing he answered himself except that we don't know where he's going and what he's doing william reasoned running the what-if scenarios through his head but you can get the answer through his grandfather prompted william sighed in frustration blue moon's like it is then he stared at a strange lever what does this one do again adjust the temperature of the train unless you mean the ones that right which changes the altitude about which the train is flying William bit back another sigh. It was difficult to think of his grandfather as anything besides conductor. He knew so much and could control the train so flawlessly. But I'm conductor now. Grandpa gave me that role. Not Jack. Not anyone else. Me. William! Avery shouted, running into the control room, followed by three excited barking puppies. Dogs out. William commanded. Avery, what is it? Don't tell me you don't sense that, Avery said, shaking him by the shoulders. William gently removed her hands and asked patiently, Sense what? Something's different, Avery insisted. Someone who's not supposed to be on the train is here. Avery? William said in the same patient tone as before. Are you sure it's not one of your dogs? She shook her head. A stray animal? Another head shake. An insect? I wouldn't be able to sense an insect, Avery shouted, throwing her hands up in the air. William felt a tug on his sleeve, and his grandfather dragged him onto his feet, just range toward the black screen. William watched in envy as his grandfather's fingers danced across the handles, flicking switches and turning knobs with years of expertise. He tapped a red dot on the screen, zooming in to show Laura in her backyard and her parents handing her a bag of food. The cluster of three dots showed him his grandfather and Avery standing together in the control room. Three more red dots that were constantly moving revealed the three puppies as they chased each other through the hall. One last blurry dot flashed across the screen. When his grandfather tapped twice on that dot, it became blurrier. Then an image flashed into the blank screen. Stow away! Avery shouted, pointing at the image. I told you! William squinted at the screen, then swiped his finger across it slowly, viewing it from all sides. Light brown hair of a haircut like his own. A determined expression on his face. White t-shirt and navy blue shorts. Eyes like Laura's. Around nine to ten years old. Finally, he looked at Avery and whispered, Max? The train to the past. Dear diary, I am sitting in my room aboard the train to the past while writing this. It's hard to find a good hiding place for you. Every time the train takes off into the air, you fly out of your hiding place, and Avery is getting better and better at finding you. And, yes, I know you're tired of me writing the sentence repeatedly, but I am on a train that can fly and travel through time. We are currently chasing down my friend, who is the conductor of this train's evil brother, after he blew this train apart. William is acting weird. He keeps preventing me from going into certain rooms on the train, and he keeps running away to tell Avery something. So I think... Laura! The door to my room bursts open and William tumbles in. Haven't you ever heard of knocking? I yelled, holding a notebook behind my back and glaring at him. What? Nothing. He says a little too quickly. Tell me every detail about the nothing you're not telling me, I demand. Fine, he says. You're not going to believe this, but there's someone on the train who's not supposed to be here. His name is... I step out into the hall and a bark comes from behind me. I turned to see one of Avery's dogs running toward me. Sunny, right? Or was it Fluff? A person is chasing after the dogs, but I don't look carefully because it's probably just Avery, right? But Avery's hair is a lot longer than that, and her hair is red. Avery also wasn't wearing a white t-shirt the last time I saw her. I spin around on my heels, holding my arms out in a T, and the person skids to a stop. I stare at his face. It's a very familiar face. A face that I've had to put up with for 14 years. 
a face I still have to put up with. Max! I screech at the top of my lungs. What are you doing here? He smiles sheepishly at me. Sorry, he mumbles. He doesn't look sorry. He looks triumphant. Get off this train right now, I tell him through my gritted teeth. I can feel all the blood rushing to my face, and I know it's turning red as a tomato. He crosses his arms and looks defiantly at me. Why should you tell me what to do? Why don't we put it to a democracy or something? My face turns even redder. Democracy, I can't help correcting. Then I step closer to him and hiss in his ear. Mom and Dad are right inside. If I scream, they'll come coming. William can erase your memories, and it will work this time. When your parents aren't here, I tell you what to do. Get off this instant. Why don't we have a democracy, Avery suggests, coming up behind Max. This is the kind of fight that I was trying to avoid. No, I growl. Max, off. But then why did you give me the necklace? Max protests, pointing to the pendant dangling from his neck. William steps closer, too. Look at the color of your pendant, Max. Now look at ours. He points to Max's necklace. The rose on his is light blue. He then proceeds to point to each of our necklaces. Mine and Avery's are both the same shade of cornflower blue. William's is royal blue, and his grandfather's necklace is a deep shade of navy blue. I'm conductor now, Max, and your necklace will turn lighter when you're ready. William tells him, Please, listen to your sister. We're not doing this for fun. It's a responsibility. Max pelts. Please, let's have a democracy. Democracy, I shout. Whatever, can we have a democracy? Fine, William and I say at the same time. I'm pretty sure he wants Max to get off just as much as I do. All in favor of Max leaving the trains of the past? Avery asks. My hand shoots up into the air faster than anyone's. So does William's. All in favor of Max staying? Avery raises her hand hesitantly. So does the former conductor. With some reservations, he explains. It's a tie. Then one of Avery's dogs bounds up and jumps into Max's arms, licking his face. Ha! he shouts, jumping up and down. Three to two, I win! Humph! <laughs> Traitor dog. After I make all our rules clear, no asking questions, no annoying anyone, no getting out of my line of sight, no ruining anything, rule like that, we set off. First, the trees begin to stretch taller. Then the leaves fade from green to teal, teal to blue, and blue to purple. The sky begins to grow dimmer, but not in a creepy way. The sound of a splashing waterfall can be heard now, and I see a trickle of water in the river. Max's eyes widen at the sight of Blue Moon's Lake, but he keeps his mouth tightly closed. A wave of calmness passes over me, and I rush to the edge of the lake, having memorized the path from my other trips here. Pull me back if I go into that trance again, I order William. Don't slap me, though. My reflection disappears and my eyes focus on the image, and a sunny meadow swirls into view. I squint harder, and I think I can make out a dark-haired guy and a looming black figure. Oh, it's Raven. And there's the phoenix flying around Jack's head, flame pouncing on Dan Lyons, and Hawk keeping a watchful eye from his perch on the tree. Can I slap her? You've tried everything and it hasn't worked. I hear Max say from somewhere far away. I feel him lean forward and approach my face, but I can't seem to tear my eyes away from the smooth, glassy surface. With one last glance at the lake, I jerk my head away. Max, who is prepared to smack me on the cheek, yelps and tumbles head first into the lake. We're all splashed by a gush of water as Max is sucked under the blue and purple surface. Ruff, ruff. Sunny barks frantically and jumps after Max. Splash! She doggy paddles for a bit, then gets sucked in too. <laughs> I didn't know Sunny liked Max that much. But anyways, ah! Oh no, Sunny! Avery cries and cannonballs into the lake. Splash! Avery, what did you do that for? I exclaim and dive in after. William jumps in after me, and so does his grandfather. Whoa, Avery says, looking around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're in the meadow. The same meadow I saw through Boomin's Lake. And frowning down at us is Jack. He nods in the direction of someone huddled against the tree, being circled by a raven. I groan when I realize it's Max. Ugh. Raven, I yell, trembling slightly myself. 
<laughs> Let him go! Max! William commands. Throw a stick behind him or something. Max obeys and Raven's head swivels around. He bounds after the stick. Phew. My heart nearly jumps out of my throat as Raven thuds toward Max again, stick in his talons. To my surprise, he drops the stick and growls, then hurries back to Jack's side. Jack jabs a finger in Max's face. Do you want him to live? He growls. I nod, unable to form words. Then take him and leave. He turns away, muttering something under his breath. Jack crosses the clearing in long strides, and William has a half run in order to catch up. Wait. He hisses, grabbing Jack's arm. Jack shakes it out of his grasp and scowls. Mom and Dad? William whispers so quietly I can barely hear him. Jack shakes his head. You should. She nods again. But... Jack stomps out of the clearing, growling four separate commands to the animals. They dart after him. The phoenix and hawk, the owl, I know, weird name, clap after him. Max blinks, stunned for a moment, then asks in an odd voice, He controls animals? Talks to, I correct, then awkwardly give him a hug. I'm glad you didn't die, I whisper, then make my face stern. See? This is why you weren't allowed on the train. To William, I whisper, What do we do about Max? William looks too shocked to the answer. He looks away. His mouth is moving, but no words are coming out. Huh? Oh, his parents. Jack shaking his head. Going through the time visiting door. This meadow. Blue Moon's Lake. Oh. I'm sorry. I say not sure what to do. Max, William reminds me what the practical and reasonable solution is. Well, all I can say is. You're not going to like it. Him either. What? I say, a shiver crawling up my spine. William and his grandfather's plans are usually pretty wild. We take him home. So far, so good. And then, um... Avery and former conductor come up behind us. William sighs as if forcing the words out of his mouth. I made a mistake putting the idea on his head and giving Max a necklace. He's too young. I'm so sorry, Laura. After we take him home, we erase his memories of the trains of the past. Epilogue. Avery. This was absolutely unfair. Why did Avery have to play with Max while Laura and William were discussing secret stuff with his grandfather? But at least Max isn't that bad. He just asked a lot of questions about the trains of the past. But what do we do now if the confident, independent Jack couldn't find his parents? How will we? Jack basically told William they were gone. With a lot of silent gestures and head shaking and scowling. But still, gone. How does one simply hope to find two adults who have been lost for over ten years? Usual superheroes had an awesome team. She had a few puppies, an inventor, a 14 year old girl, and an old guy. And none of them have superpowers. Plus, they all have weaknesses. Not that she wasn't super grateful for the team she had now, it was just that she didn't mind getting another one. A dragon would be helpful, we could have a bird's eye view and search the sky. Or riding a fire tiger through the forest would be cool. And a person who would protect us while teaching us about nature and talking to animals would be great too. Avery immediately slapped herself. What the? Am I seriously thinking about recruiting Jack? But then again, aren't we basically on the same side, now that we all have the same goal? Ooh, maybe Jack can be the older brother I've always wanted but never had. She startled herself with that thought. She could just imagine how ridiculous that would be. This train has actual rooms? Max's question has snapped her back into reality. Yes, I guess you can have one. I mean, I guess I can ask Conductor William if you could have one. Max beamed. Great. Avery felt a weird, bubbling, tingling sensation. Friend, she thought gleefully. I have a friend. Wait here for a second, Max, she told him. I'm going to ask William whether we should recruit Jack. The end. Thank you for listening. I hope you have enjoyed The Trains of the Past, Series 2, Part 4. Please start on Part 1 to hear the full story. Links to the rest of the story are in the description section below. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. 
Series 2, Part 5, coming soon.